Welcome to the HSC Coach. In this video, we'll go through the top 50 practical interview questions for safety officers working in live oil and gas shutdown projects. Let's begin. The first question is, tell me about yourself. And the answer is, thank you for considering me for this interview. My name is Rohan Rai and I have built solid experience working as an HSC professional in oil and gas shutdown environments. In my previous project, I contributed to achieving a million safe man hours, which I consider one of my key professional accomplishments. I've also completed certifications such as NEBOSH, IOSH and OSHA, which support my technical foundation in safety management. I'm confident that my experience and proactive safety approach will add value to your team and operations. The next question is, what is zero energy demonstration? And the answer of this question is, zero energy demonstration means physically proving that no energy remains in the system before maintenance. We do this by attempting a tri-start, verifying pressure gauges, checking fluid lines and ensuring there is no stored energy. This eliminates accidental activation risks. The next question is, what is lockout tagout or LOTO? And the answer of this question is, LOTO is the procedure that locks and tags energy sources such as valves or switches to ensure that no one can accidentally start machinery or open systems during work. It protects workers performing maintenance or repairs. The next question is, why is isolation important? And the answer of this question is, isolation protects against unexpected energy or hydrocarbon release. It ensures a physical separation between the worker and the hazard, preventing leaks, shocks, pressure bursts or fluid releases before work begins. The next question is, what is method of statement? And the answer of this question is, a method of statement explains how a job will be done safely, step by step. It includes the procedure, hazards involved, control measures, responsibilities and emergency precautions. The next question is, who develops GHA or JSA? And the answer of this question is, it is developed jointly by the supervisor, the HSC officer and the workers actually performing the job. The real world experience adds practical insight to identifying hazards and controls. The next question is, what are the steps of risk assessment? And the answer of this question is, we identify hazards, determine who might be harmed, evaluate the risk level, implement controls using hierarchy of control and then review and update as necessary. The next question is, what are the types of hazards? And the answer of this question is, hazards can be physical, chemical, biological, ergonomic, psychological or mechanical. Each type requires different control strategies to keep people safe. The next question is, what gases are commonly monitored during shutdown? And the answer of this question is, typically we monitor hydrogen sulfide, methane, VOCs, oxygen levels and carbon monoxide. These indicate toxic exposure risks and fire or explosion potential. The next question is, how do you handle H2S risk? And the answer of this question is, we ensure all personnel have gas monitors, SCBA units are ready, workers understand evacuation procedures and importantly, everyone must move upwind of a leak not into the gas cloud. The next question is, how do you verify isolation practically? And the answer of this question is, we don't just trust paperwork, we physically verify it. We check valve positions, confirm blinds or spades are installed, perform tri-start tests and confirm zero pressure on gauges. The next question is, what is no harm or no leak? And the answer of this question is, it means work was done safely, no one was injured and no leaks or environmental releases occurred. It is a standard of safe execution. The next question is, under what conditions can a hard work permit be issued? And the answer of this question is, only when gas testing confirms a safe atmosphere, fire hazards are eliminated, fire watch is assigned and firefighting equipment is ready and accessible. The next question is, how do you ensure proper gas monitoring? And the answer of this question is, we ensure gas detectors are calibrated, batteries are charged, workers know how to use them, and we monitor gas continuously, not just once. The next question is, what do you do when gas alarms go off? 
And the answer of this question is, you stop work immediately, raise alarm awareness, evacuate upwind and wait for the work carrier to be cleared and declared safe before re-entry. The next question is, how do you ensure PPE compliance? And the answer of this question is, by reinforcing PPE rules, correcting workers respectfully, leading by example and explaining the purpose of each PPE item, not just ordering it. The next question is, what are the responsibilities of a safety officer? And the answer of this question is, we monitor site activities for hazards, enforce permit systems, perform inspections, provide training, communicate risks, and continuously promote safety culture. The next question is, how do you handle unsafe behavior? And the answer of this question is, I respectfully stop the work, explain why the behavior is unsafe, demonstrate the correct method and ensure the worker understands before continuing. The next question is, how do you respond during an emergency alarm? And the answer of this question is, we immediately stop work, shut down equipment safely if possible, evacuate to the muster point, ensure everyone is accounted for and wait for the all clear message. Now the next question is, what is SIMOPS? And the answer of this question is, SIMOPS means simultaneous operations, where multiple jobs happen at the same time. It requires careful coordination to ensure one job doesn't create risk for another. The next question is, how do you encourage near miss reporting? And the answer of this question is by removing blame culture, thanking workers for reporting and showing how near misses help prevent real accidents. Workers should feel safe to speak up the next question is, what are key safety practices for confined space entry? And the answer of this question is, we perform gas testing, assign a trained attendant, ensure communication, maintain ventilation and have a ready rescue plan with equipment. The next question is, how do you ensure workers understand the permit? And the answer of this question is, I ask them to explain the permit requirements in their own words so I can confirm they truly understand the hazards and controls. The next question is, how do you prevent heat stress? And the answer of this question is, we provide hydration, shaded rest areas, frequent breaks, and rotate tasks to limit direct exposure to heat. The next question is, what is breaking containment? And the answer of this question is, it means opening a system, such as a line or flange, that contains hydrocarbons or fluids. The line must be depressurized, drained, gas tested, and spill control must be ready. The next question is, what is double block and bleed? And the answer of this question is, it uses two closed valves with a vent in between to remove trapped pressure. This ensures no fluid or gas can reach the work point. The next question is, what are the types of isolation? And the answer of this question is mechanical isolation using blinds or spades, electrical isolation using switch off and lockout, and process isolation for fluid control. All ensure safe working conditions. The next question is what is permit to work? And the answer of this question is it's a formal document that authorizes high risk work. It specifies hazards, required controls, and roles of responsible persons. The next question is, what are examples of hot work activities? And the answer of this question is, tasks that generate sparks or heat, such as welding, cutting and grinding are hot work and require extra precautions. The next question is, what are examples of cold work? And the answer of this question is, tasks like cleaning, fitting, painting or general mechanical work that don't create ignition sources are considered cold work. The next question is, what is confined space? And the answer of this question is, it is an enclosed or partially enclosed area with limited entry or exit, not meant for continuous worker occupancy and may contain hazardous gases. The next question is, what are the hazards of confined spaces? And the answer of this question is, common hazards include oxygen deficiency, toxic gas accumulation, limited mobility, and difficulty escaping in emergencies. The next question is, what is job safety analysis? And the answer of this question is, JSA breaks a job into smaller steps, identifies hazards at each step, 
and defines controls to minimize risks. The next question is, what is a toolbox talk? And the answer of this question is, it's a brief safety discussion held before work begins to refresh awareness of hazards and instructions for the day. The next question is, how do you manage SIMOPS? And the answer of this question is, by coordinating schedule timing, separating incompatible activities, using supervision, and maintaining clear communication among teams. The next question is, what is isolation and what are its types? And the answer of this question is, isolation prevents energy or hazardous material from reaching the work area. It includes mechanical isolation, electrical isolation, process isolation, double block and bleed, and blinding or spading. We always physically verify isolation status. The next question is, what is the frequency of gas testing? And the answer of this question is gas testing is done before entry, periodically during work, after any break, and continuously if conditions require constant monitoring. The next question is, who authorizes a permit to work? And the answer of this question is, it is issued by the responsible area authority or permit issuer, reviewed by HSE if needed, and accepted by the permit receiver who understands the requirements. The next question is, why is the no smoking policy important? And the answer of this question is, smoking is prohibited in operational areas to prevent ignition sources. Workers may only smoke in designated safe zones away from hydrocarbons and flammables. The next question is, what are the responsibilities of a fire watch? And the answer of this question is, fire watch personnel monitor hard work, watch for stray sparks, hold firefighting equipment and stop the job if they detect any hazard. The next question is, what is emergency shutdown? And the answer of this question is, emergency shutdown automatically isolates process systems and cuts energy supplies during emergencies to contain or prevent escalation. The next question is, what is man riding? And the answer of this question is, man riding means lifting a worker using specialized lifting equipment or man basket. This requires competency, pre-inspection and strict supervision. The next question is, what is work at height? And the answer of this question is, any work performed at a height where a person could fall and be injured, typically above 2 meters, requires fall protection measures. The next question is, what is permit handover? And the answer of this question is, when shifts change, the permit is transferred to ensure the incoming team fully understands ongoing work, hazards and requirements. The next question is, what is emergency muster? And the answer of this question is, it is the gathering of all personnel at a muster point during emergencies for hit count and instructions. The next question is, how do you stop unsafe work? And the answer of this question is, anyone can exercise stop work authority. If something is unsafe, we stop activity, communicate the risk, correct it and only resume after making it safe. The next question is, what do safety sign colors mean? And the answer of this question is, red means danger or prohibition, yellow is a warning, blue indicates mandatory instructions and green shows safe routes or emergency exits. The final question is, why are you suitable for shutdown work? And the answer of this question is, I stay calm under pressure, communicate effectively with workers and supervisors, understand isolation and permit systems and always put safety first. My experience in shutdown environments makes me confident in maintaining high safety standards. And that brings us to the end of the session. If you found this helpful, please subscribe to the HSC Coach. Stay safe, stay prepared and see you in the next video.